It's now my privilege of introducing today's keynote speaker. Julia Hubble is an award-winning entrepreneur, professional speaker, and author who specializes in teaching women and minority-owned companies how to do business with Fortune 500. Julia's program is used by the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, National Minority Supplier Diversity Council, and Fortune 500 corporations who want to expand their women and their minority spend. Her clients include Hewlett Packard, Lockheed Martin, Chevron, ExxonMobil, Ernst & Young, and Bank of America. That's just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Julia Hubble. Ten March. I was in Houston at the WBEA doing a program on tackling the Titans. Down in the front seat was a WBE, we'll call her Helen, and she was taking copious notes. On the first break, she walks up to me and she says, I need your help. I said, sure, what can I do for you? And she said, I want a million dollar contract with Chevron. And I said, so do I. And I said, well, what kind of business are you in? And she said, promotional products. I said, what's the biggest contract you've ever had? And she said, $2,500 with a local rotary. <laughs> and I said, time out. And so we spent the rest of that first break talking about how to sell to the folks who 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 sell to the primes who sell to Chevron. Helen was nowhere near ready for the prime time. In fact, she probably shouldn't have been certified. There are some fundamental rules in this game, and they are you need to have a fit, there has to be a need, you have to have capacity, which is a big rule in this game, and capacity has to do with your size, and sometimes it takes years. There are some challenges in supplier diversity, and let me give you a sense of what some of those challenges are. This year, at the beginning of the year, when many supplier diversity folks got their budgets, there were some big cuts. Across the board, across the country, in many, many industries, supplier diversity budgets got cut by 40%. Some more, some less. By later in the year, some very good people lost their jobs. Some of you new to this industry may not realize that in many supplier diversity programs, only one person runs that entire program for a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, what does that mean? That means some very, very good, devoted, committed people who were already overwhelmed and overloaded are trying to do everything that they were doing and a whole lot more with a whole lot less resources. And that means when we call them up, and we leave messages, and we want them to pay attention to us, maybe they don't get back to us. Does that mean they don't care? Does that mean they don't support women? Not in the slightest. They care just as much as they always did, but they have to answer to the RFPs that are already, that are already open. The other reality is, and I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put the gauntlet right down, is that corporate America and most companies are gonna go to an existing supplier that they already know to ask them, can you do this for us? Can you make this widget for us? They're gonna always go to somebody that's already in the system for a need. Now, we may not like that because we want a chance, but we would do the same, the same thing in our own companies. We're gonna go with somebody that we know. We want a chance, and supplier diversity is fighting that good fight for us. But we will always go with a known quantity before we go with somebody unknown. But there's always good news because this means that those opportunities for most of us in this room exist at those lower tier levels. And there are thousands of opportunities, and I'm gonna come back to that in just a moment. But I do want to address an issue that exists within supplier diversity today, and that is with those crowded commodities. Now, Helen, for example, is in a crowded commodity. She's in promotional products. There are 36,000 31,600 promotional products companies in the United States. There are 371 of them who are certified WBEs. 
Now, 95% of those 31,000 companies are owned by two people or, or less. Those are many small business companies. And corporate America doesn't need another very small promotional products companies uh, selling to it. Another crowded commodity is marketing, and women love marketing companies. We're good at it. There are over 105,000 marketing companies in the United States, and 1,335 of them are certifi certified MBE WBEs. The problem is that that's a crowded commodity. And the number one offender is IT, IT staffing. And I'm just going to be blunt with you. IT staffing, for example, there are 100,000 IT companies in the United States. WBEs, there are 11,000 of us. There are 6,552 WBEs who claim to do IT work. In the IT staffing phase, ladies and gentlemen, it is extremely crowded. And if you are in that space right now, those opportunities only exist at the lower tier levels. And I will be honest with you, if you call up the senior level folks in supplier diversity, they are not going to give you an opportunity because those spaces are already crowded. They are having a hard time giving opportunities to the people they already have on board. It's not that they don't support you. It's that the opportunities have already been taken. The opportunities do exist, but they exist at the lower tiers and there are plenty of them. So imagine for a moment that all of us are wearing blue suits as suppliers. The challenge, and what I'm gonna go to now, is how do we show up in an orange suit and make ourselves visible? And that's everybody's challenge as a supplier. In a crowded space, how do we make ourselves visible? And that's what I wanna to go to now. Now, I'm a CPSD, and as a CPSD, that's a Certified Professional in Supplier Diversity, I've been asking my buds in Supplier Diversity, what drives you crazy? What do you don't want to hear out there on the trade show floor? And so, what is the number one offender? The door slammer that they don't want to hear is, I'm a WBE and I'm looking for opportunities. We know that. We know that. That's why you're here. So don't say that. Number two, I can help you make your diversity numbers. Why? Because these are professional procurement folks. Diversity numbers are important, but they're here to fill open RFPs. Whether you're talking to a prime or senior level WBE with a major corporation who you should be talking to, we're here to fill an open RFP. So present your best product or service. Third, we do IT or we do marketing or we do janitorial. It's too broad. What do you guys do? Or what do you guys buy? That's why we have websites. <laughs> we do it all. Just tell me what you want. Let me paint you a picture. You're, fronting in, you're standing in front of Kevin Bell. You've got a $200,000 company. He's got Chevron. And you're saying to him, we do it all. Might not make a whole lot of sense. And my favorite, where do you see an opportunity for me? Now. You might say, wait, that's a perfectly good question. No, it's not. And here's where I'm going to lean on my friend Linda Ware. <laughs> Linda Ware is with GM. Linda Ware happens to be brilliant, savvy, amazing. She's been with GM a long time. Let's say you walk up to, G to Linda Ware at the GM booth and you're going to brag about your company. How big is big? GM, $150 billion, 202,000 employees, 156 huge facilities on six continents, 8.9 million cars in 120 countries. That's humongous. That's gigantic. That's massive. That's big. That's hundreds of thousands of suppliers in every category you can possibly imagine. And here we are, we're so excited, and we're saying to Linda, here's my company. Where do you see me fitting? <laughs> now, Linda is also very gracious. She won't say anything, but here's what she's thinking. doesn't have a clue where you fit. 
fit. She has no idea where you fit. Now, would you like to know how to change this situation? Would you like to know how to make Linda's eyes dilate? Let's just say you grew up with a bunch of brothers who knew how to fix cars. And you're a tinkerer. And you figured out that GM had a point of pain this year. In August, GM recalled 250,000 SUVs, the GM T360 and the GM T370, because of door electronics. And you got to tinkering. And you figured out that little problem with the door electronics. Now you're here, you walk up to Linda, and you say, I solved the problem of corroded door electronics. Linda's pupils dilate. She grabs your card, and within two weeks, your life changes substantially. Everybody get the difference. Instead of walking up to Linda and expecting her to do all your research for you, you walked up with a solution to a significant point of pain with a GM. The rules have significantly changed. So here's where we get to strategy. Ladies and gentlemen in this room this afternoon, if you want to stand out in an ocean of blue suppliers and put on an orange suit, there are three ways that you can get the corporate folks' attention, the Prime's attention, the Lear's and the Visteon's and all the people to pay attention to you and people like Andrew Rush, if you want them to pay attention to you, there are three things you need to know. The answer to these three questions, here are your door openers. Number one, what is the solution that you offer? I'm standing in front of a room full of people who have solutions to all kinds of issues in corporate America. Number two, what is the problem that you solve? Every morning, corporate America wakes up with migraines, hundreds of thousands of problems, and the women in this room started businesses to answer those problems. Even if you are in IT staffing, even if you are in general staffing, of which there are 17,000 companies in this country, even if you are in general staffing, what do you do that's different from everybody else? How are you unique? What is your differentiator? How is, what's the problem that you can solve for me that nobody else can do? That's how you differentiate yourself. Number three, how can you give me a better margin than somebody else in the market? How can you improve my market value? What can you do for the other guy? What have you been doing for the other guy that you can do for me that makes me better in the marketplace? Do you do lean systems? Do you do leadership training? How can you make my employees more efficient? How can you get me to market better than the other guy? If you can answer one of these three questions in a language that is corporate speak, and I can say to you, I've got that problem, give me your card, let's talk in two weeks, you have just stood out in an orange suit as opposed to everybody else that's wearing blue. That's the difference between you and everybody else in the thousands of blue-suited suppliers. Everybody get the message. Now, if you wondered what I said to Helen about selling to tears, and some of you had this conversation with me yesterday. The number one strategy, pick an industry niche. If you're selling to anybody and everybody just trying to survive, stop it. Pick a lane and swim in it. The next step is to get involved with every organization and every association involved in that industry. Get known, have a table, have a booth. Become active, get visible, become a leader. Attend the meetings, attend the conferences, speak at those conferences, show up, be visible. Learn the players, and in fact, ladies and gentlemen, become a player, become a voice, and become an expert. Have a blog, write a book, become somebody who's known, become a consultant, become somebody that people start calling. And in fact, at some point, you're not only gonna be selling to the lower tiers, you're gonna become one of those tiers. And in fact, one of the strategies is you start doing business with these people, you're going to be partnering with people, you're not going to be a $200,000 business. In no time at all, you're going to be a $120 million business, and you're going to move up the ranks. Over time, the, the bigger businesses are going to be calling on you because you're going to be a known quantity, and you're going to move right up the tiers. And it's, at some point, the, the, the bigger businesses are going to be calling on you. Ten years ago, Robert McCombs Ballou told me a story. Now, he was the head of supplier diversity for Office Depot. And he used to tell me that the WBEs would aggressively elbow each other out of the way on their way to get to him as a corporate person. 
Now, who was in the crowd that they elbowed out of the way? Pam O'Rourke of Icon Industries, Andrew Rush. Now, are these just women in the crowd? These women own multi-million dollar companies who, by the way, are now required by contract to do business with women like us in this room. That's called multi-tier. That's required by the Fortune 500 companies, and that is the future. That's where the opportunities lie. In fact, Andrew just told me that this past year she did $20 million with companies just like us in this room, and I think that deserves a hand. We can get so frustrated beating down the doors of the Fortune 500 companies when the opportunities are sitting right here at this table, across the table from us. The opportunities are with the women's businesses right in this room. And we don't have time to be fighting over table scraps when we've got $100,000 companies. We don't have time to be arguing with each other and calling each other competition when the real truth is that the women that we call our competition are our real partners and they are our future. I spent all day yesterday walking through this facility talking with you and this is what I saw. I saw warriors. I saw courage. I saw guts. I saw amazing, powerful, incredible, intense women. It takes courage to start a business in this economy. It takes courage to get up in the morning and fight the good fight. But it takes more courage to realize that sometimes we have to let go of our logo and start a business with another woman in our NAICS code to get bigger. Because ladies, by the middle of this century, in less than 40 years, we are going to be living in a minority-majority society, and we need to start doing business with our sisters who are minorities. We have to start creating collaborations because this world is going to be fu fundamentally different. Supplier Diversity is an organization that is set up to help us do that. We have to build capacity. We have to earn the right to do business with Supplier Diversity, and we, those opportunities exist at the tables that you are sitting at now. Pay attention to the faces that are sitting across from you. They are our future. Let's collaborate with each other first. Let's build the capacity and earn the right to do the business with the Kevin Bells and all of the other people who, own the, who have these supplier diversity programs. I wish you the best of luck. My book is going to be available this afternoon. It has that advice in it. I salute every one of you amazing, amazing women. You have the capacity to succeed and to build the economy that we can be. Best of luck to you this afternoon. Thank you.